Joining me now, Sean Parnell, Army veteran of Afghanistan, author, running for Congress in a swing district in Pennsylvania. Sean, before we get to actually asking the questions, I need to play for you this wonderful piece of audio of a professional wrestling fan talking to some old wrestlers and showing his respect for them. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank each and every one of y'all for all you've done to your bodies. <laughs> it's still real to me, damn it! <laughs> Sean, Sean, how great was professional wrestling back in the day? It was amazing. I, I, I'm telling. Look, I watched WrestleMania two on. You know, and I will. I will say right here, right now on this show, Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock both wrestling at the same time. Best entertainment in the world, right oh, there. Oh, yeah, they're so good. Absolutely amazing. Just great entertainers. I totally respect it. All right, Sean, I sent you a picture right before you got on the air. We don't have to go into all the specifics of that particular picture, but. We now have Asian murder hornets. And what I need to know is, do you feel like you would rather be stung or you would rather take on five Asian murder hornets or a bobcat in singular combat? Wait, where did this come from? I mean, how is this the choice that I've been given? Sean, (laughs) I don't. I don't make the rules, Ben. You have a bobcat, you have a cage with a bobcat, or you have five Asian murder hornets. Which cage are you choosing? My, I'll, I'll, I'll take my chances with the murder hornets. First of all, I, that's, I mean, look, that's, that's where I'm at on that. But why are they called murder hornets? What? Who gave them that name? <laughs> I mean, for real, is anybody... Murder well, hornets. Clearly, you have not seen what exactly they do. They're called murder hornets because they have these big mandible jaws, and I mean they're huge. If you look at an up close, just look at an up close pic. That up close picture I already sent you, Sean, of an Asian murder hornet. And what they do is they <laughs> land in a gigantic beehive and they saw off. They basically rip off the heads of every bee in there. It's it's amazing. There's video of this online. These things are huge, man. Well, first of all, how did they get here? Why, I mean, as if 2020 needs yes. anything else to make it, <laughs> yeah. you know, like a, a pandemic, a pandemic, uh, an economic crash, the likes of which hasn't really been seen since the Great Depression and now murder hornets. What's next? I know. Well, well, it's funny you should bring up what's next, Sean, because we have 33 million unemployed in the United States of America and people are still scared to go out. They're scared to go back to work. Businesses are going to be going under, so there's nothing they can return to. And now what we need is a mindset change in the public, and I don't know how we do that. Sean, use your fancy Army officer lingo and tell the American people why they need to get back to work. Well, I mean, look, I I think this is a leadership leadership issue, right? And Mm -hmm. uh, the the fact of the matter is this, Jesse. In a crisis when lives are on the line, no course of action is without risk, right? Like in Afghanistan or when you're in combat, and again, when you're in a crisis, oftentimes you're given, it, you're given a situation with an imperfect solution, right? Like anytime you leave the wire in Afghanistan, you have to balance accidental risk with tactical risk. In other words, like, yeah, if you're riding on this road, on this rugged terrain, you could roll your truck and people could get hurt, but also the enemy could ambush you and people could also get hurt, right? So. It was the job of a leader, and you know this, having been to Iraq, the job of a leader is to communicate to people. It's like, look, here are the facts. This is what we're doing. This is what the mission is. But it's it, no course of action is without risk. And I think in this situation, I mean, I haven't really heard leaders talk about this, but each individual American has to be responsible for assessing what level of risk is tolerable to them, right? So moving forward in, in reopening, um, if you're in a high-risk category, you, you might want to consider staying at home if you're not willing to take the risk. Um, if not, and people want to go back to work and they want to go back in a safe way, we should allow them to do that, right? Like I talked to, to a, my, a stylist, right? She's got a business in PA-17 here. She's having trouble putting food on the table for her family. She can't pay her bills. I just talked to her about this. Mm. 
And I mean, she said something to me that sort of changed my perspective. It's like, look, if I'm willing to take the risk to give you a haircut and you're willing to assume the risk to get a haircut, it should be my choice, right? Well, I don't know, Sean. Um, that almost sounds like freedom. We can't have that. Well, I mean, look, Jesse, here's the deal. Like, you know, we, I, I've seen you talk about, like, President Trump owning the lockdowns and stuff like that. But I think it is important to distinguish that President Trump's lockdown strategy was strategic and meant to be short term. He's since pivoted to, hey, let's have a safe reopening. And that's why you see a lot of Republican governors deferring to individual freedom and responsibility and trying to reopen their states in responsible ways. And then you have a state like here, Western Pennsylvania, where Governor Wolf, we've met his criteria to reopen. He set forth criteria. We've met it. And then he came up with a, with a variable of population density that was never part of the consideration in the first place. He moved the goalposts, and he kept us locked down. There are almost 2 million people in Pennsylvania that are unemployed. There's food lines in my district. I never thought I'd see that happen. It's time for a, a new approach, Jesse. We have to do something. Otherwise, I'm telling you, you've got children. So do I. Our children are going to grow up in America, in an America that is a shell of what it once was. And we can't allow that to happen. Sean, give out your website real quick before I get to this last question. Yeah, it's seanforcongress.co. Seanforcongress.co. Sean, we need to talk, frankly, about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Why, why you always do this to me? What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. I just feel like once you get elected to Congress, I feel like a date or two, it has to happen, Sean. We all know it has to happen. <laughs> there's no way. There's no way that's gonna happen. There's no way that's gonna. I've got. I've. I've got the coolest woman in the world in my life right now. I, you know. I mean. And Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, you see when she gives those speeches and she's waving her arms around, like I mean, I mean, doesn't that? I mean, can you imagine that directed at you, Sean? I'm not saying the, that the intellectual stimulation is going to be a wonderful experience. I understand that this is borderline asking you to jump on a grenade here. I get that, buddy. I get that. But it's called selflessness. Maybe you, maybe you forgot about the heroism you showed in Afghanistan. I will let you. I will let that be one of your life's ambitions. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna stay focused on my family and and all the good that I've got in my life right now. All right. So <laughs> I, I took that as you're gonna think about it. That's fine. All right, Sean. Are you a buffet man or not a buffet man? Well, I mean, after this pandemic, I think I'm going to be reevaluating a lot of things, but I've always been a Ponderosa guy. You got Ponderosa down there in Texas? We do not have Ponderosa here. We have Red Lobster, Sean. All right, are you getting fat during the quarantine? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yes. Gyms are closed, man. I mean, this is crazy. I'm not going to lie. I threw on my boxers this morning when I got out of the shower, and I thought, daggone, how'd she shrink these? Oh, wait, no, that's probably not the case. <laughs> Sean Parnell, SeanForCongress.co. I appreciate you, my friend. All right. Thanks, Jesse. That's a rough feeling, isn't it, Chris? You throw on a pair of clothes, or you throw on some clothes, whatever it may be, and it's not brand new, so it didn't just shrink, and you're like, man, that that's weird. What? Someone must have broke in and shrunk these. <laughs> you know what's funny is as a guy, I think Jeff Foxworthy has a great little stand-up bit on this. You know what? We may try to get it. We may try to get it for the last part here. He has a great stand-up bit about how he lost something. And he's like, for some reason, every guy's solution to this is someone stole it. <laughs> someone broke in and stole it. I use it on my kids all the time. Do you know where this is? No. What, do you think someone broke in and stole your, your your little cassette thing? All right. We only have one segment left. I'm going to try to actually get to some headlines. Hang on. Jesse Kelly Show.